That's our lesson on um, timing and spacing and extreme skis in between and breakdown. All right, so let's take a look here. All right, so I just kind of overlaid those um, samples right there. So this is your classic bouncing ball with diminishing power right here. Okay, so it kind of came, I should have lowered this a little bit. I was just kind of doing this in a little bit of a, in a hurry. But anyway, we have a classic, a um, rubber, soft rubber ball here. So we're getting a um, some squash and a little bit of stretching, okay? But the key takeaway here is your classic, uh, classic uh, Richard Williams lesson from his book, which he got from, I forgot who the animator was that, kind of taught him and corrected him. Um, it's this part right here, where uh, you want to have a ground contact before you want to squash, okay? Before they kind of skip this part, uh, they don't have this ground contact kind of thing. So uh, I guess I can go like so like that. So that we could see everything. Okay, so just kind of changing my onion skin so you could see all this. All right, so we have a ground contact, and then after that, the ball is squashed, okay? And then after that, it goes back into shape, and then it's up. You can actually skip this. It's just that we're not animating in twos. We're animating with every frame right there. So you can kind of see this kind of just get squashed a little bit. But here's the takeaway here, okay, that there is contact before the squashing. Same thing here. There's contact before the squashing. Okay, and this is a classic example of basically timing and spacing. So your timing here, let's say if this is all we're seeing, would be your main keyframe. You're timing it where you think the ball would be on the ground, contact, and those would be your, um, your uh, breakdowns right there. So first would be your main keyframe. Or in this case, since we don't have anything other than just the ball bouncing, the key can double up as the extreme. Okay, so the key or extreme, or this would be your, let's just talk about the keys, this would be your main keyframe. So if we have, let's say, Spider-Man swinging from building A to building B, we would have a minimum of three keyframes there. One would be on building A, and then keyframe number two would be between the building, with an arc, of course, and how he's kind of swinging it. Okay, and then the last one would be on building B, so you have major keyframes or the major key positions there, okay? The extreme then would be the major keys that are in between the original major keys, okay? You can call them minor key or we just call them extreme, okay? The breakdown basically is contact, okay? So you mark your breakdowns where you get contacts. And of course, uh, whatever is drawn between keys or extreme would be your in-between, okay? So let's say this animation has another key right here where this guy gets, I don't know, lightning bolt, and then you see him kind of freeze right here, and then uh, it'll do that one. So then, you know, it, this won't just be an in-between. It'll be a major key if there's a major event happening there which occupy timing, okay? So anything that you draw in between, it's basically called the in-between or what they call a shortcut name of tweening, okay? So in-between. So normally in a program where there's an anime, it's kind of like Blender or After Effects or Premiere or any of this program, you just set the major keys for, um, for, your, um, for your animation and then the program itself, they do the in-between. You might not be happy with the in-between because they assume a certain look or a function code for it. That's why you have to go there and kind of tweak that a little bit. When it comes to 2D animation, well, hand-drawn 2D animation, I'm not talking about Flash 2D animation here or After Effects 2D animation. Like hand-drawn, well, you are the in-betweener also, right? In the industry, basically, we have the senior animator and the junior animator. Think of it like the junior, uh, senior or the master animator does the key and extreme and breakdown poses or drawing. You then as an intern or a junior animator or just starting in the industry, you're in charge of doing the in-between. So they draw about um, 
10, 5 to 10 percent of the entire animation, you draw about 90 percent of it. Okay, so that's the uh, the role right there. So timing again would be your key, your breakdown. Okay, we have one right there. So major key would be on frame. Uh, let me just press home right here. Major keeper would be on one if we're just watching this animation, right? The next major key would be uh, right here on the breakdown when you actually hit a frame 12. And then the height of this uh, should lower that a bit actually. It's a little too high. Anyway, frame 17 would be your other main keyframe. And then 22 is your other main keyframe or breakdown because that's a contact. So we don't call it key anymore. We just call it breakdown. Then finally, the other key would be on frame 27. Okay, so 1, 12, 17, um, forgot, 22, and 27 will be your main key. So you would draw those, and then uh, you go back and you fill in the in between. All right, so your homework for tonight is to substitute this. Um, soft rubber ball into a ping pong ball or a tennis uh, table tennis ball okay so it will not have the exaggerated property of principles animation such as squash and stretch because the property of the ping pong table very similar to let's say golf ball it's pretty rigid golf ball if you're not hitting it with a club it's pretty much will retain its shape okay uh, but uh, yeah, I know technically if you whack a uh, golf ball with a club, it would look like it's elongated. Okay, it doesn't keep its shape. Okay, uh, but let's say if you're just dropping it on a uh, hard surface table or ground, it will basically just bounce up like a ping pong table. Okay, your homework is to redo this entire uh, animation, but this time, okay. You're just uh, using a ping pong table, a ping pong table, a ping pong ball, or a golf ball. All right. So I made it here 27 frames. You can make it shorter if you want to buy a few frames. But I, you know, I mean, let's play this one. Pretty much, it'll play kind of like that. Okay. A little bit of kind of stretching here. I have to retime this a little bit right here. It's being harried right here. So. Try to probably uh, move this one, probably go at least 29 frames on this. But uh, you get the point, okay? So replace the animation with a ping pong ball.